Welcome to On The Job with Finger Lakes Television, where we focus on the newest generation in the workplace. We'll take you on a road trip to offices, factories, and farms across the Finger Lakes region to see how millennials are finding their niche. I'm Dinah Brennan. As your host today, I'm going to start with a company in the town of Ontario at the north end of Wayne County called Optimax. About 300 people work there, making high precision lenses for the aerospace, medical, and semiconductor industries. We're going to meet two women who work at Optimax. Jenny Kingsley and Jaden Powers. Jenny and Jaden are like a lot of people their age. They weren't sure what kind of job they wanted after graduating. Both of them took a risk in trying a career that required them to learn on the job. Now Jenny can't imagine herself doing anything else. Let's take a look. My name is Jenny Kingsley. I work here at Optimax. I go through and I generate the part from the blank and we go through, grind it, polish it, and we actually make the physical lenses. A lot of what I make goes into things like, um, it's made for LASIK eye surgery, it's made for use in um, developing manufacturing equipment for semiconductors, and if you go over to like prototype and everything, they do a lot of NASA products, and it's things that are gonna be appearing in NASA rovers. Easiest way to describe making a lens is I go through and it's a little bit of basic CNC, so I've got a machine that I actually tell to generate my curvature that I desire. I've got to grind it down, get kind of that rough edging off of it, and get it ready for polish. And then I've got a bunch of different series of machines, depending on the style, whether or not it's concave, convex, if I need to run it on top, run it on bottom. It's something that, it very much so depends on the part and the style of the part. I went from being somebody that was just good at making stuff, as kind of like an artist and sculptor, to someone that could actually make high precision lenses that go into things that do LASIK eye surgery and that just amazing things that I never thought possible. I actually have gone to school for fine arts of all things. I like creating and I want to make things, but I don't really know, I don't know anything about a lens, so I just applied and I'm quite dirty, like all the time, but it's great and it's usually in my eyebrows, it's in my hair, it's all over my face. But it's one of those things of, I'm, I'm a maker. I don't sit behind a desk and I don't, I don't look out a window wishing for more. I actually come into work and I'm excited to work and I love it. And it's, I make and I create and we actually make things that are life-saving, that are incredible for the exploration of the future. This isn't a job, this is definitely a career. This is something where I come to work and I work, but I love it and I enjoy every moment of it. I wish this is something I had found when I was 19 or 20. It's something that I could be 10 years into a great career right now. If I'd thought about this, heard about this, the company's been around for 25 years now. So it's one of those, like, I wish I'd gotten in on this sooner so I could have experienced and helped this company build. So it could have helped me build my own life too. Any woman could do this. Like, it's small, ideal on small parts. So it's, we're little people. I'm little, I'm five what one. So you just have to be okay with trying something new, living outside your comfort zone. The guy I'm replacing actually got promoted, so it was wonderful to see that advancement is immediately possible from the position I'm in. He worked with me on and off for about three months. He kept showing me new ways, different ways, and then I'd get something down. He's like, so that way just kind of worked for that one thing. We're gonna show you a better way to do it, and 20 other ways, and you're gonna make your own ways still because Yes, this is science, but science is all about trial and error. So if you have a math background, and you have a science background, and you have a little bit of an art understanding, you can go through and you can understand the different levels of, so if I generate this part and then I've got to go through and grind it, I need different levels of curvature and things like that, and how they're going to end up, and then once I grind it and I've got to polish it, now I'm cutting into this even more, so I need to understand not just like the depth of what I'm cutting, but the effect of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. It's all an art form to figure out a very, very scientific sort of thing. You wanna be very open-minded, ask a lot of questions. Don't ever stop asking or wondering. You need to enjoy life, you need to enjoy what you're doing. It's so important to make you a happier person, to make you a more productive person, and it's so rewarding in the end to give back. This is one of the best hourly wage jobs I think I've ever had, and you have to start somewhere. You can't just expect school to land you a job. It's, you gotta get out there, you gotta try, and maybe try something you're not good at. And if this is, if this is asking a lot, try it. What's the worst that could happen? Failure? But what's the best? Success is so much better. You can tell Jenny loves what she does, but it took her a few years to find her way to Optimax. Her story shows that you can approach a lot of careers from different angles. Jenny has an art background, and she found that some of the skills she learned in art classes translated to creating lenses. 
an understanding of math and science is another way to approach it. Jenny got started at Optimax through an on-the-job training opportunity, sponsored by the Finger Lakes Manufacturers Enterprise, called the 5% Pledge. The pledge is made by employers who provide five internships or temporary openings for every 100 workers they have. More than three dozen companies in the Rochester, Finger Lakes area have made the 5% Pledge. It's a great way to try out a job and see if it's something you really like. Jenny's colleague, Jaden Powers, works in the Optimax clean room. It's an area where the company takes special precautions to make sure the room is as free of dust and dirt as possible. Unlike Jenny, Jaden did have a science background. She has a bachelor's degree in chemistry and still found her way into optics. Now, let's take a look at her story. I'm Jaden Powers. I'm the uh, team lead here in the coding department at Optimax Systems. So I'm actually in charge of uh, production on all three shifts, so uh, daytime, evening, overnight. Uh, and I keep track to make sure that things are running up to speed and I also keep track of continuous improvements, looking at ways that we can improve our process and to make sure people are in the correct roles. We make a prototype optics, so precision optics. These are uh, low quantity, high quality optics that are going to be used more for you know, space applications, uh, satellites. We put our optics into the Mars rovers. We also manufacture for uh, new technologies. So we actually are on the kind of like the cutting edge of prototype technology that's going out into the world. So we kind of get a glimpse to see what's going to be out there before it actually gets mainstream. People don't really think of manufacturing as something that's going to be as high tech as putting things into outer space. We actually just made optics for a satellite that's uh, MIT test. And what that is doing is actually looking for exoplanets, so other planets that are habitable or maybe habitable by human life far out of our solar system and, and, and beyond that. I, I got started basically, I, I got my bachelor's degree in chemistry at the University of Brockport and at the time after graduation I was a waitress and I decided I didn't want to be a waitress anymore and I put out resume after resume after resume to different companies around the Rochester area and I knew optical manufacturing was really really big in the city and luckily for me my brother-in-law was an intern at the company and I ended up asking him about it you know my husband always told me my brother puts things in outer space I thought, oh that's kind of cool so I ended up applying and I, I got an interview I came in and I I got the job and I was, I was grateful to, to be able to be a part of the company one of the things about optical manufacturing is that 99% of the people that get into it never intended to. So having previous experience in it is a perk, but it's not something that's commonly found. Uh, so a lot of the people that we hired, you know, we have a really, really wide array of, of backgrounds. A lot of people are musicians, a lot of people are into the arts, a lot of people are, are more onto the, you know, the creative side of things, and we also have people here that are more into the, you know, the hard sciences. Our, our clean room in particular is not necessarily a sterile environment. It's more clean room in terms of particulate into the air. We, we try to keep particulate down as low as possible because it helps us get the most yield out of uh, coating optics there. If dust gets onto an optical surface, it'd be the same as if you were making a painting and a, a piece of hair fell onto the painting. You'd pull the hair off and there'd be a part of that painting that doesn't have any paint on it. A piece of dust can get onto an optic and you're talking a tiny, tiny, little, tiniest piece of dust you've ever seen will get onto the optic and actually leave a coating void onto the surface. We've made a lot of improvements in our area. We have filtration systems in place. We obviously are all gowned up wearing a, a hairnet, booties, a huge smock, and we've really done a lot to try to reduce the amount of dust and particulate in the air. The coating department that I work in is, is very unique, I feel. We evaporate material using an electron beam into a vacuum chamber, which actually creates a plume and, and coats the optics. We can track how thick that coating is by the angstroms with some of the sensors that we have. So it is pretty um, advanced and, and, and really interesting. And on top of that, in the same department, you have people that work on machines, but you also have people that need to clean the optics. And then you have people that need to create the coating and what that's going to look like. So there's lots of different roles in the department and we all kind of have to function well together in order to make sure that we are all 
going towards the same goal and that we're all being productive and getting out the work that needs to get out. If anybody's interested in optical manufacturing, you're in the city to be interested in optical manufacturing. Uh, MCC offers really, really good courses there. The U of R, um, my brother-in-law actually went and did two years at MCC, finished up at U of R, and he's an optical engineer here at Optimax. Um, there's also courses the U of R offers for people who aren't students there, but can take like a two-week course on, on optical coding. People here at Optimax, I like to believe are a little bit different than what you're going to see out in a regular manufacturing floor. Uh, obviously in my field, in, in optical coding, you definitely want to be detail oriented. You want to be a little bit analytical um, and kind of have a little bit of background in physics and, and chemistry and things like that doesn't hurt. However, whenever I go through the process of hiring somebody, coming from a, a field that does, doesn't really see a lot of people with background knowledge, you learn to base it off of who the person is. And then that's one of the things that Optimax embodies. When we're looking for people, it's definitely finding a good balance between you know, having soft skills, being a pers uh, personable, um, being able to take constructive criticism well, being able to work together as a team, being that self-motivated type of a person. And at the same time, having the hard skills are a benefit too, having that background knowledge in, in the hard sciences, chemistry, physics, uh, any kind of engineering background is a perk too. Uh, but, you know, uh, ultimately what I look out for is, is this somebody that I can and want to work with. When people ask me what I do, uh, I always just say I work in optical manufacturing and you're welcome for the pictures of Pluto. I really like Jaden's enthusiasm for her job. She makes connections with the way lenses get used in real life. She knows the products she makes will be components for satellites. Her work will be a small part in the incredible scientific discoveries to come. Jaden also talked about the importance of working as a team. Your ability to work closely with others is often just as important as your educational background. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the fascinating work Jenny and Jaden do at Optimax. If you're interested in learning more, you can start with the company's website, www.optimaxsi.com. Local colleges have programs in optics, advanced manufacturing, math, and science degrees that could help you prepare for a job in a place like Optimax. This show is a joint project of Finger Lakes Works, Finger Lakes Community College, and Finger Lakes Television. You can find out more about all three organizations and the 5% pledge that gave Jenny her start by using the contact information at the end of this show. I'm Dinah Brennan. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to join us on the next episode of On the Job with Finger Lakes Television.